Hello, my name is Red Nelson. I'm part of the School of Workforce Development at Conestoga College, and in this short video I'm going to address the topic of research. This is part of Quality 8135, Current Topics and Quality. This video will also be accompanied by another short video on how not to fail this course. This is the result of a short search that I performed on Indeed in the Kitchener-Waterloo region. Canada Post, these are all engineering positions making about $60,000 or more a year. An analyst, process engineering, provides technical, business, and problem analysis to support engineering optimization projects. Good combination of lean and research technical problem solving. A Metro Ontario intern position, perform detailed analysis and research to conduct feasibility studies. Project engineer, find and define the best solutions to implement. Field engineering for Purolator. So this is a company that delivers packages, but still has a need for research. Support the testing and implementation of new technologies and procedures. Evaluate and present recommendations for medium and long-term capital projects. So these companies might not be ones that you would normally think of as involving research, and engineering may not be a field that you always think of as involving research, but it certainly is. It's been my experience, and I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, that search was one year old. So today, I performed another search. He's still using Indeed. This is the 20th of May, 2020. Uh, this term, I looked for uh, full-time quality technician jobs in Kitchener. There's 36. So this is a position for Dare Foods as a quality coordinator. So among the responsibilities and requirements that are specific to the food industry, you'll notice one of the essential skills and qualifications lists strong technical writing skills with experience developing quality programs. So, researching topics, combining them together, creating some new program document, and providing technical writing to make it coherent and useful for the employees. So research isn't always called research. Those of you who have taken the supply chain management course or maybe taking the supply chain management course next term, uh, recognize that there's all kinds of purchasing decisions. What are your choices? Who are possible suppliers? How do they compare? What are they selling? Are making purchasing decisions. That all involves research. Then if you have an operation, whether it's a, whether you're in quality or operations or what have you, there's all kinds of decisions that need to be made about the technology that you're going to use equipment purchases, processing techniques, and so on. So you need to be able to compare or contrast different kinds of options, whether it's equipment or processing, even gauging systems. All right, problem solving. Problems don't solve themselves, right? So you're taking entire courses in problem solving techniques, and much of that involves some sort of a brainstorming and some sort of a research of different uh, reasons, experience that other companies have had, and so on company databases or, or what have you. Uh, process improvement. So I also teach Lean. I know that's a course that you uh, have or are taking at Conestoga College. So this idea of process improvement also requires a lot of research. Fundamental to process improvement is this idea of benchmarking. So uh, finding what other companies are doing or finding what your company has done in the past, what's worked, what hasn't worked, uh, what potentially could solve a problem that you have or improve a process. All right, any kind of an R&D, fantastic job if you can get into research and development, obviously research. All right, even compliance, which is once you're in business and then you still have an ISO standard or a QS standard, or a, uh, whether it's nuclear or health or any sort of industry, very often has different standards that they need to meet. So you need to understand what your obligations are, be able to read the standards, understand them, and oftentimes communicate them to others. So here are some examples. Purchasing decisions. Very early on in my career, I was asked to install or made responsible to install an emissions lab. I knew nothing about emissions labs. So I had to research what were the requirements, what were our options, what was good, what was bad, the entire project cost the company probably two or three million dollars, so bad decisions on my part, 
were very, very expensive. And again, I didn't know anything about emissions, vehicle emissions. All right, using current technology. So you may have, and I've done this, where we had a department um, doing CAD drawings of product, and we had the quality department doing CAD drawings for the coordinate measuring machine. And so somebody had a great idea, but somebody needed to do the research. Could we communicate between the drawing and the part drawings to the CMM? All right, and on and on and on. You might be asked to improve some sort of a process in quality. Right? You need to improve the quality of heat treating or grinding or turning or 3D printing or injection molding, whatever it is. So you need to understand the process in in some detail. Um, and often you don't know this when you first take on a job. If you work for Dare Foods, you're not an expert making cookies, but you're going to be expected to learn how it works, how the process works, how the equipment works, how the people work, right? What are the requirements? What are the quality standards? And so on. So I can almost guarantee you that any sort of a role that you get in quality will involve research. Okay, let's talk quickly about the research process. Very often it starts with some sort of a problem statement. You might get it in class here, right, where you're given an assignment or some sort of a problem or some sort of a case study. Um, so now, you need to find some credible sources of information. Very commonly, people are going to turn to Google. It's a wonderful tool and has access to tons and tons of information, but Google is not the be-all and end-all of sources. Even Google Scholar is a little bit better. It starts to get into more technical articles and gives you access to uh, a bit deeper knowledge base. But I encourage you, especially while you're here, with access to the Conestoga College Library, and they have partnerships with libraries around the world, use the library resources. It may sound boring, but it's actually going to give you access to much more valid, authentic, accurate, and deeper data. Narrow your searches to isolate the best ones, uh, to best, isolate the best content. Then now you need to put together, you've got a short list of content, you've got your problem you're trying to solve, you need to marry the two, uh, fit together and find what part of the information you found fits what part of the problem you're trying to solve. Okay, so then you, your writing part comes in. You're going to need to analyze and summarize the relevant data, put it together with your own thoughts and ideas, and ultimately develop some recommendations and some conclusions, write some executive summaries and the like. Okay, so this is what we're going to ask you to do in this particular course uh, based on a couple of key topics of Industry 4.0 and Quality 4.0, and we'll ask you to research some of these different technologies and some of the impact that they're having on quality. Those are very, very current topics. So uh, you'll have an opportunity to dig into those, look for sources, analyze, summarize. Okay, so that's my little introduction to research. A little bit of a motivating piece to say it's, it's worth it for you to do in this class and, it's, and it pays uh, in industry, in quality and in engineering. Okay, so just a little uh, checklist for week one. Please watch my welcome video. It's about 12 minutes and it gives you a better introduction to the, the entire course. Review the course instructional plan. I have a short student survey that I'm asking you to complete. Just a half a dozen very quick questions. Won't take you very long. And join my Microsoft Teams site. All of that you'll see is listed in the current topics and quality uh, course folder in the course information folder. All of that should only take you about a half an hour. All right, then uh, progress into the week one folder, review this topic on research. I'll have a link to this video um, and a number of other resources on research, the citations. And like I said, my next one I'm gonna post is how not to fail the course. And that's it. That'll be in this week one topic. All right.